This sleep story and all the rest of my sleep stories can be found on my Dan Jones Hypnosis Sleep Stories podcast, which can be found at danjoneshypnosis.com. And 20 of these sleep stories can be found in my book, Bedtime Stories for Grown Ups. And I also have two books of stories for children, Relaxing Tales for Children and Sleepy Bedtime Tales. So if you like this story, give it a thumbs up and leave any comments below and feel free to share this with anyone else who may struggle with sleep or may find this interesting. So allow yourself to get comfortable and begin to relax. And I don't know whether you'll fall asleep deeply and comfortably to the sound of my voice, to the words that I use, or perhaps to the spaces between my words. And as you fall asleep comfortably, I'll just tell you a story in the background. A story about a woman going out on a run one day. She leaves her apartment, runs down to the road. She starts running along the road and she's got headphones in listening to music and she can feel the pounding of her feet rhythmically and the way that she rhythmically breathes. She can feel the breeze on her face. And she can notice the trance-like experience, the way that while she's running, she almost seems to go onto an autopilot. And so she runs down that road. And she can notice cars passing by. She can notice trees lining the streets. And then she turns off into a grand park and starts running around that park. A park full of trees and grass and flowers. Some people just sitting, chatting on benches and on the grass. Running past, people stood around the lake, watching the ducks and swans on the lake. Running past, people walking their dogs. Running past, children playing. And people just chatting. And she runs around this park. And as she runs around this park, so she begins to drift and dream in her mind as her body goes on autopilot, running around the park. Her mind drifts inwardly. And she starts to drift into a reverie, almost like her body's perfectly fine doing what it's doing, and so her mind can go elsewhere. And while she's drifting in this reverie, she begins to have this sense of floating and relaxing. Almost like her body is just doing its own thing automatically and she's drifting and floating and relaxing. And she feels like she's lying back in a boat that's floating on a lake, just resting in the sun, keeping away from other people. There are people on the shore, but she's just here resting in the boat. And then after a while of having this reverie, 
her ears begin to hear being in the park. Her body begins to feel being in the park. And then she becomes aware that she's still running in the park. And she decides that perhaps she'll take some time to rest a while. So she sits down on the grass near the lake. She wants to drift and experience more of that relaxation. She wants to drift into that reverie again. And while she sat on the grass, she can feel the grass under her hands, between her fingers, as she relaxes. And she decides to lie back on the grass and close her eyes. And with her eyes closed, she can hear the slight lapping on the shore of the water of the lake. She can hear sounds of ducks in the water, the sounds they make as they move through the water, the sounds of people around her. And they all just help her relax deeper and more comfortably. And she starts to drift off asleep. She starts to imagine herself lying on that boat in the middle of the lake. She can feel the slight rocking of the boat while she lies there in the middle of the lake. She can hear the sound of the water as it sloshes against the side of the boat. And then after a while of feeling so deeply relaxed, she sits herself up and looks around herself. And she gets the oars and she rows towards the shore, can feel the pressure of the water while she pushes through that water with the oars. Can hear the sound of the oars pushing through the water. And she rows to the shore, and at the shore, she exits the boat. And she notices this shore is different to her non-dream experience. And so she decides just to go with this dream. And she walks into some woodland, just exploring, curious, what the experience will be like. And as she's walking into the woodland, so she notices the sky light up bright, and hears a whooshing, fizzing sound and notices a comet, or some kind of a meteor, or something is passing through the sky. And then it seems to be heading towards where she is. And she's a bit apprehensive about this. But then notice it seemed to land somewhere in this woodland. And now the apprehension turns to deep curiosity. There was no explosion. There's no sound at all of it landing. No damage or harm seems to have been done. So she decides to explore to find that meteorite. To figure out what it is, where it came from, and why it seemed to land nearby, and yet made no sound. 
and caused no damage. And so she walks deeper into the woodland, hearing the rustling leaves of the trees, sounds of birds, feeling the breeze, and noticing the way light shimmers and dances through the canopy, and through dust that's in the air, almost like dancing shards of light in front of her, and she walks through those dancing shards of light. And she feels a sense of joy, a sense of wonder and curiosity as she continues to explore deeper into the woodland. And while she goes deeper into the woodland, she starts to feel a certain warmth. And it isn't warmth from the sun. So she wonders whether it's warmth from whatever has landed. And she walks deeper and feels warmer. And then after a while, she finds a small clearing, and in the clearing, she sees what looks like a craft, some kind of vehicle. And she walks on to that vehicle, finding a way in. and notices how smooth all the metal is. And yet, this craft is somehow radiating heat. But it's radiating a steady stream of heat that seems to travel some distance from the craft, that seems to stay at about the same temperature of heat from a certain distance from the craft, all the way up to the craft. That temperature doesn't seem to get hotter the closer you get to the craft. It reaches a certain temperature and seems to stay that temperature all the way to the craft. Which she finds unusual, because ordinarily she's aware that the metal might be hot, but the further away from it you get, the cooler it gets. And given how warm it was on approaching this craft, she thought that it would be too hot to get near to. And yet here she was, inside the craft. And she was aware of how smooth all of the metal was as she explored the craft, curious what she'd find. And she saw what looked like some kind of a being, some kind of living creature. But something was on top of it. And she could see it looked like it was perhaps distressed. So she went over to it and decided to try and help it. But she couldn't lift the bit that was on top of it. It looked like perhaps... It had come to a halt very suddenly. And although it hadn't hit the ground, and although it didn't create any kind of explosion, it seemed to have created some damage inside the ship. And so she found a way to create a pulley system so that she could so that she could lift that heavy weight off of the being and she managed to lift it off the being 
and she went over to that being and moved it from where it was to somewhere a bit safer. And the being wasn't talking to her. And all of a sudden she just had this feeling like somehow it was communicating ideas from its mind to hers. Not in words, not in images, but just the communication of ideas. In the same way that you suddenly get an idea that you should suddenly keep yourself safe and be quiet or should suddenly run or you just get an idea and you suddenly start laughing you have the idea to laugh and no one tells you that what's just happened is supposed to be funny the idea for laughter just happens and the laughter just happens and there's no language, no pictures in the mind, it's just an idea. And these ideas get presented to her that she just instinctively understands, that transcends language and typical communication. And she starts to find out that this craft had crashed here, that it had managed to break in time to not hit the ground. But the emergency braking had still caused a lot of g-forces and had still managed to break the inside of the ship. And that in orbit was the main ship, this was just a landing ship, it was just supposed to be a reconnaissance, coming down, getting a closer look at planet Earth, scanning the life, getting some samples of the ground. Trying to go unnoticed and then going back to the main ship. And she was curious what it would be like on that ship. And the communication of the ideas went from her mind to theirs. She didn't ask, it just knew she was now curious and ideas got shared backwards and forwards, that they were curious about her, and curious to learn more about her biology, about her as a being, and about the planet, and she was curious about them. She wasn't scared of them, She wasn't in disbelief, she was just accepting of the experience and she was curious about them. And so they decided it will be mutually beneficial to take her back to the ship. And they take her back up to the ship and she watches through the windows as it rises through the atmosphere into outer space and connects with an enormous ship in space and she's curious about how they're not weightless she'd seen footage of space and she knows that she would normally be weightless and they communicated the ideas of being able to create artificial gravity on the ships. And that it was an essential part of being able to do long term space travel.
and she walked onto the ship and could see there was a whole community, that it was like a city floating in space. There was communities, families, that everyone here looked like they were getting about their normal, everyday lives, as if this was a city, and yet it was floating in space. They communicated the ideas that this was the only way to do this space travel, that the distances are so vast that even at the high speed they can travel, the only way to stay travelling is to commit to that being your life. And so people are born here. People live out their lives here. Some get roles that involve doing exploration. Or piloting the ship. Or doing other roles to do with the ship. And others just lead lives. In the cities below. But ultimately they are a research. And exploration ship. Which set off thousands of earth years ago. And that from time to time, the crew on the ship becomes so large, they reach a point where a number of them leave on their own ship and set up a new ship. And so they've always got a ship being built from resources they find as they travel through space. And the woman found this fascinating. She saw how happy people seemed to be. And she was curious what the land was, what the planet was that they initially came from. And no one on the ship had ever been to the planet they came from. Every place the ship had been was recorded so they're able to trace back where this ship had been and where their planet was. And they'd got records of everything. But they were too far to be able to communicate reasonably with anyone. when many of them left the planet they essentially just became nomadic exploring new frontiers occasionally they would stop and some would occupy planets that hadn't got life on them and would like to start settlements But mostly they just continue travelling. They find a destination. And it can be generations before they arrive at that destination. So everyone just goes about their life like normal. And then from time to time. Someone will be born who's going to grow up and be lucky enough to be of an age where they see an alien world. And 
and it becomes big news here. And they communicated, presented the ideas that this world was one that they were very curious about. Because the life on this world was the closest life to themselves. That usually the life they find is just bacteria. Perhaps just moss or fungus. Or at least life that resembles what people on earth would think of as those kind of things. It's rarely animals and even less rare and even more rare is that those animals have the knowledge and ability to create things to create technology and to understand the universe. And she was fascinated by all this and she looked out and could see the earth above her head as the ship circled the planet. And after a while, they did a few tests with her and they asked her some questions. And they copied information the planet was giving off. I managed to access all the information on the internet, downloading that to the ship. And once they'd done that, she was given a lift back down to the planet, back down to where she was found. She was dropped back off there, the ship took back off again. She knew no one would believe her if she told them this experience. She worked her way back through the trees back through the dancing shards of light. All the way back to the lake. And back at the lake, she got back in that boat, pushed off from the shore, and decided to rest and drift asleep. And as she rested and drifted to sleep on that boat, to the slight rocking of the boat, the sound of the water sloshing against the boat, she awoke by the shore of the lake. She looked around herself, wondering whether that dream which felt so real was a dream. or whether there was more to it. She had this strange sense that somehow there was more to it, and that somehow maybe she'd been made to think that she had just fallen asleep and had a dream. But she couldn't work out whether she was being made to think she'd fallen asleep and had a dream, or whether she'd actually fallen asleep and had this dream. And she got herself up and she did some stretches 
She jogged on the spot for a little bit, jumped up and down a bit, before setting off running again, back towards home. She ran through the park, rhythmically relaxed, ran back down the roads, and she found herself all the way home, where that night she went to bed, and as she comfortably relaxed, drifted asleep, she imagined the experience, imagined what the experience was like, and dreamt about it as real as real life, being absorbed in the dream of the experience, as she drifted and slept comfortably all night long.